Hello and welcome back to another brand new episode of Michael's Corner and today we've got a very special episode that we're bringing to you. Today we are bringing to you the details of the new Government of Canada First Time Home Buyers Incentive Program. So if you're a first time home buyer, you're really going to want to stay tuned to this. Okay, so now with most government programs, as you can imagine, there's lots of rules and stipulations. So we're going to do our best to kind of outline these and go over them in detail so you can understand a little bit more if this program makes sense for you. Okay, so let's start with a bit of an overview. The Government of Canada launched its new First Time Home Buyers Incentive Program, and it's designed to assist with the monthly cost of carrying a mortgage to the first time home buyers. Now, if all goes to plan, the government's going to fund about one and a quarter billion of these over the next three years. Now, a first time home buyer can be eligible, and this is pretty mind blowing here, they can be eligible for up to 10% of the purchase price put towards the down payment to help lower the monthly cost uh, with no interest and no set rep uh, principal repayment terms. Now, there's a lot of details on this, but we're going to cover the basics and provide some links to the government website with all of the details. Links will, as always, will be in the description below, uh, including a calculator to see how much you're eligible for uh, and for up to what purchase price. So definitely worth checking out. Now, let's talk about some of the basic eligibility. Now, you, uh, obviously, the first time home buyer's incentive. Person purchasing this home must be a first time home buyer with, of course, some exceptions. We've kind of alluded to that. They'll have more details down in the links below. Now, a person must also have a minimum down payment, so you have to have at least 5% down based on the value of the property that you're looking at. If you don't have that already, that's your first step. Start working on that and then come back and review this video. You must also earn less than $120,000 a year. Now, this includes your annual salary as well as any investment or rental income that you have, so you do want to make sure you're factoring that in and you cannot exceed over $120,000. Now, the total borrowing cost can also not exceed four times your qualifying income. So uh, let's say you have $100,000 just for a simple round number sake. Let's say you make $100,000. That means your purchase price cannot be over $400,000, okay? Uh, the Government of Canada is offering either a 5 or 10% incentive, and that is strictly dependent on whether you're looking at a new build or a resale. And this makes a lot of sense. You know, on a resale, getting that extra 5% can make a huge difference. However, on a new build, unlike in a resale where your money is predominantly going to one player, on a new build, there are thousands of people, thousands of jobs along the way that you're supporting uh, through the trades, the office staff, the admin for all of the various companies that come together. So it makes sense that they're offering up to 10% down. So yes, in that scenario, let's say you're looking at a $400,000 home, you could be eligible for up to 10% uh, uh, or $40,000 in down payment assistance from the government, bringing you from a potential 5% down up to 15%, which is huge. So let's say, uh, let's say you're a first time home buyer and your qualifying income is $100,000. So your maximum purchase price is 400,000, four times 100,000. And that means you have $20,000 saved for a down payment or 5%. Now in theory, you'd be eligible for up to 5% share of equity mortgage from the government or an additional $20,000 down payment on the home. And the money from the government of Canada is registered on title as a second mortgage. However, it has no interest and no principal repayment terms aside from the mortgage when the mortgage is due in 25 years or when you sell your home, whichever comes first. Now, you can also prepay at any time without penalty. The deal is, and this is very unique, the deal is when you repay your shared equity uh, mortgage, the amount due is based on the fair market value of your home. So this is where it gets a little interesting. So let's say your property, you bought that $400,000 property and you know a certain amount of times passed and now that home is $450,000, okay? When you go to repay that loan, whether you, because you've sold it or your 25 year term is up, you would be on the hook for 5% down of that 450,000, what your new value is, not your old 400 that you purchased to that. So in this case, rather than paying back $20,000, you'd be paying back 22,500. However, if your property, this goes both ways. If your property value has dropped 
Say you purchased it, purchased it at 400000 and it's now only worth 350000 You're only going to have to repay 5% of that 350000 or in this case, 17500 Pretty cool. Make sure you're covered both ways. Now, some of the more details. Number one, you must be a Canadian citizen, permanent resident, or non-permanent resident, but are authorized to work in the country. The home must be in Canada and must be able to be lived in full-time uh, year round. So obviously they're not going to help buy you foreign properties. It also must be your principal residence and you must live in it. Okay. And they may find ways of checking on this. Uh, so keep that in mind. Try not to play around with that. Now there are some restrictions on what the debt service ratios look like uh, or can look like. And again, more details are going to be in that calculator down below. And the mortgage must also still be eligible for CMHC or Genworth insurance. Uh, you cannot have more of a loan value, loan to value ratio of over 80%, which means let's say you're that first time buyer that really saved up their down payment. You have 20% down. First off, good for you. Uh, but second of all, you cannot actually qualify for this program anymore because you now, uh, you're over that 20% maximum equity in the property right off the bat. Okay. So let's start talking about some of the takeaways, some of the negative side of this, right? What are the potential complications? You know, the other shoe dropping, if you will. Well, we've had our legal team review this and there's a couple of things we want to take into consideration. One, it may take longer to be approved for this program than a normal mortgage and sellers may not be able or willing to accommodate the longer condition time. And, you know, standard conditions are seven business days or, you know, up to 10 days uh, in total. And if you now need to spend a couple of weeks getting qualified, this could be problematic for a seller. Number two, Higher legal and appraisal costs will result as you now have two separate mortgages that have to be prepared and registered, one for the lender and one for the equity share from the government. And an extra appraisal will have to be obtained and paid for by you, the owner, if you're paying out the incentive mortgage prior to the ultimate sale of the property. In other words, if you're going through that uh, prepayment approach, you're going to have to get that new market value on it. Number three, a disincentive potential to improve and renovate the property. So let's say you want to improve the property. Let's say you want to put in $10,000 worth. Well, part of that money is going to get sent. A part of that equity gain that you create in the home is going to end up going to the government, obviously for that equity share. You may consider that a disincentive. You may not. Number four, a potential trap is being created for non-permanent residents who are legally authorized to work in Canada who can qualify to buy under this program, but will have extreme difficulty in selling when their work permit expires as they may not have built up the sufficient equity to satisfy the required withholding requirements in the Income Tax Act. Number five, it may be more difficult to refinance the property. At this time, it's not perfectly clear whether the government is going to permit refinancing on the first mortgage and postpone the security to the new financing. Which brings us to number six. If we are refinancing the first mortgage, if, or pardon me, if refinancing the first mortgage will not be possible without paying out the government's equity share, then the first mortgage lender is going to have what we call a captive borrower. In other words, you can't go anywhere. The lender is now going to have zero incentive to reduce uh, posted mortgage rates uh, or, or give you the best offers because they know you're not going anywhere. You can't go anywhere. So there is that potential if they don't allow for the proper refinancing. Okay, so we want you to keep these things in, uh, in mind. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, this has, again, been a very special one because of this new program. Give us a call if you have more questions on it. We're more than happy to go into it with you. Uh, the links, as always, are down below in the description. And I want to thank you very much for watching. Take care.